Hi guys, it's just around 6 o'clock in the morning and it's time for me to get up and get busy. It looks like it's a really beautiful morning outside, but uh, let's go take a look. It's awesome outside, it's gonna be a beautiful day. To me, the muddy banks and the boats that dry out on them during low tide is still very exciting because we don't have anything like that back home. I hope we'll get to see more marinas like this one here in Kirby when we make our way up the west coast. Ah, what an awesome way to start the day. Yesterday I had the boat warming that I've mentioned in the last couple of videos here aboard Athena and it was a ton of fun and the weather was just perfect. Now whenever I meet up with people in real life I tend not to shoot any video and that's because a lot of people don't really want their faces out on YouTube and I get that. And also to be honest I'd much rather focus on getting to know the people that I'm meeting up with rather than trying to get some footage. And also, I won't mention your name unless we've actually agreed that it's okay for me to do so. So, uh, yeah, if you have those kind of concerns, don't. Just uh, swing by the next time there's a boat warming and uh, I'd love to meet you. In the video where I announced the boat warming, I also told you guys not to bring any kind of boat warming gifts, but uh, apparently someone didn't listen. <laughs> and uh, he brought me some really amazing gifts, some local delicacies. Among other things, this uh, tube of haggis, which uh, I'm sure the crew will enjoy very much. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm actually very much looking forward to trying this. I might have had haggis as a young boy, but I can't really remember. So uh, yeah, this will be exciting and uh, I'm sure the crew will appreciate it too. Now that the uh, morning coffee is out of the way, I'm just gonna pop into town to see if uh, one of the garages up there are open for business. I wanna see if I can get a new filter for my pre-filter or my water separator. And also I have a question for a mechanic about the uh, coolant in my engine. So I'll be right back. My trip up to that local garage was a big success. Around noon I'll be able to pick up three of the filters for my water separator or pre-filter and that's awesome because that means I can go ahead and replace that filter and that also means that I can go ahead and replace my fuel filter. So once I've done that there's not really a lot more I can do on the engine but like I mentioned I'd like to also flush the coolant. It's not going to be very easy for me to show you guys the uh, pre-filter and water separator because it's, it's hidden behind the exhaust hose here but according to the previous owner the easiest way of uh, removing the filter is actually to pull the entire housing because access is kind of limited. So let's go ahead and do that. First thing though is to shut off the fuel. There we go. I'll place a bit of paper towel underneath the uh, pre-filter and water separator. I pulled off the connection to the tank and also the connection to the engine. So next up two bolts are securing the water separator to the boat. Now let's get those bolts out without dropping them into the bilge. And there we go. Here we have the pre-filter and water separator and um, I can't see any water in here and that's a good sign. I know the boat has been sailed recently in bumpy conditions. So if there's any water in the diesel tank I'd suspect to see some in here. So that's a good sign. There might be a little bit of muck in here but uh, we'll take a closer look once I've cracked this open. There's a little bit of debris here and there's also some in here. So I think cleaning all of this is probably a really good idea and bringing along some extra filters is also a very good idea. Now that I've removed the filter, I can go ahead and bring this up with me to the garage when I go to pick up the new filters. That way I'm sure that this will fit. But uh, let's go ahead and replace the fuel filter. The fuel filter is a lot easier to access than the pre-filter. And if you're wondering what this thing is, I had a quick look in the manual and that's the pump you use for priming the system if you get a bit of air in there. But let's go ahead and uh, remove this filter. Yep, it's on there pretty good. The filter is on there really good and I've tried using this, well, let's call this the persuader. <laughs> I used this to remove the oil filter and it was quite effective. But uh, this won't fit around the uh, fuel filter so um, I've tried wrapping my belt around there to see if uh, I can get a grip and uh, loosen that filter. <sighs> there we go. Here 
here we have the new fuel filter. I'll just put some diesel in this before screwing this in place. And there we have the new fuel filter mounted. Of course, it's kind of useless for me to try and beat the system before I've got the pre-filter in place again. So that'll have to wait till I've been up to the garage to fetch the new filters. Someone in the comments on the previous video suggested that I put a date on the filters. I love that idea, so I'll go ahead and do that. <laughs> I hope future me will be able to read that. <sighs> okay, so a lot has happened in the past two hours. I went up into town to pick up my uh, extra pre-filters and uh, there was a mechanic up there waiting for me and he gave me a lift back to the boat, he helped drain the coolant, he helped top off the system, he also helped me put in uh, a new pre-filter and bleed the system, so pretty awesome guy and the garage didn't actually charge me a lot, so big win! So the engine is all done and uh, I'm sorry but I didn't get any footage of it but uh, I bet you guys are pretty sick and tired of uh, diesel uh, maintenance by now. But uh, I did do a few things yesterday that I'd like to show you. I've had the engine running for almost an hour and uh, I don't need to add any more coolant now. It's been stationary for a while so uh, let's go ahead and put the cap back on. There we go. Now that I've switched over to the new type of coolant that Volvo recommends, I better put that up here on the header tank so I don't accidentally mix the old and the new kind. Anywho, I wanted to show you two things that I managed to check off my little to-do list yesterday. The first of them is uh, the fact that I managed to do at least a temporary install of the ARS transponder and the ARS splitter. But uh, let me show you. Down here we have the ARS transponder and the splitter. And uh, of course we have that big dangling mess of wires up there. Now am I proud of this installation? No, not by a long shot. But uh, this should get us to Denmark. But it's kind of awesome that I was able to mount the AIS transponder this close to the chart table. Because that means I can leave my laptop here and I can then hook my laptop up to the AIT2000 with its USB connection. And then I can have AIS information inside of OpenCPN. So it's basically a backup for the chart plotter. Awesome! The second thing I wanted to show you is right behind me, underneath the starboard side aft cabin bunk. Here we have the batteries aboard the boat, and the thing I wanted to show you is this little product. This is made by a company called SeaTech, and the product is called Battery Sense. The Battery Sense is one of these newfangled products that allow you to do things with your smartphone. The Battery Sense provides a Bluetooth connection that I can then use to monitor the charge state of my batteries using my smartphone. Or at least that, well, that's what the product claims. This product has gotten some pretty awful reviews online and I can, I can kind of see why, but uh, we'll get back to that. For now, let me just uh, show you the app. The app is very simple. First, you're presented with a list of all your battery sense monitors and seeing as I've only got one, I can only choose this one. So we'll go view details. I'm then presented with a percentage up here that's supposed to indicate the charge state of my batteries. And I don't really like that. I'd much rather have it just be voltage. Then down here you can see sort of a graph of uh, how your battery has been doing over time and that was actually the main reason I picked up this product. If I check the app, my battery charge state is supposed to be 89%, but if I take my multimeter and check the voltage on the batteries, it's 12.3 volts. I don't think that equals 89%. In my eyes, this would be a much better product if uh, they just showed us the voltage instead of this uh, percentage bullshit. But uh, yeah, I'll give this a fair chance and I'll do a video about it when I'm back in Denmark. But uh, what do you guys think about this product? It seems kind of odd, to me at least. Of course, nobody forced me to buy this product and uh, I knew going in that it was going to show me charge date and percentage, but I like the idea of this product in part because it's a very easy installation because the battery sensor is only connected to the negative uh, terminal on the battery and the positive terminal, so there's no need to mess around with any kind of shunt or stuff like that. But um, yeah, I think it'll be interesting to test this product and uh, we'll get back to that in a future video. I think I might have mentioned in the beginning of this video that the crew is going to be joining me tonight. In fact, they might be just around the corner, so I better get busy doing a bit of housekeeping to make the boat look nice for them. Oh yeah, and uh, sadly I won't be able to publish this video for a while because I'm having some really annoying internet issues. Mm. But uh, I'll get it up as soon as I possibly can. Okay guys, that's going to be it for this video. See you! Jukul and I hope you've enjoyed this video. For more videos like it, click subscribe. Please consider leaving a comment and a thumbs up. It really helps me a lot and I appreciate your support very much. If you're new to the channel, please check out the introduction playlist. 
If you want to watch every single video I've ever published, check out the playlist named All Videos. It contains every single video listed in chronological order.